What if I told you that America just produced one of the fastest cars on a million dollars? It's not a Ferrari, it's not a McLaren, it's not a Lamborghini, it is just simply a Corvette. The 2025 Corvette 01 has just shattered expectations, hitting an insane top speed of 233 miles per hour. This isn't just a record for the Corvette, this makes the 01 Corvette one of the fastest production cars ever built by an American company under the million dollar mark. But here's the thing, while GM is breaking speed records, they're also breaking the wallets, was likely to be one of the most expensive Corvettes ever. So let's dive into how the Zero One became America's speed king and what it means for performance car enthusiasts like me that actually wants a Zero One. <laughs> It's starting to get to that time of the year we need to make your dollar go a long way. Now, whether or not you need to buy you an exhaust system, uh, sticky Mickeys, catch cans, whatever, my friends at Drag Racing Wheels and Just Boldons have you covered. And with my discount code over here, Butter, that you can use to check out, you can save up to an additional 15% off on your next order. So take advantage of this discount with my friends at Just Boldons and DragRacingWheels.com for some of the best prices online for aftermarket parts just got a little bit better. GM's president Mark Roos himself took the wheel of the 2025 Corvette Zero One and pushed it to a jaw dropping 233 miles per hour. Now this is something that you won't see the cost of various from Salans would do in a Hellcat or whatever, try to take that vehicle to his limits. And I seem to recall that Jim Fairley from Ford he did about the same thing in a track car. So you have these very aggressive either CEOs or presidents who are pushing the boundaries of their vehicles. So my over 36,000 friends and it's 71% not subscribed. This high speed run took place at the high speed ATB testing track in Germany where GM's performance team has been working to push the boundaries of what this zero one can do. To put this into perspective, the Corvette engineers originally aimed for a top speed around 220 miles per hour, which isn't really that far off for the 2018 Dodge Demon, which I was hoping that the 2023 Demon 170 would exceed that. I, I think that if we had a, a Demon 170 without the Mickey Thompsons, or maybe even put this same um, elephant engine, the baby elephant, into a Charger, that maybe we could have had a top speed Dodge vehicle in the 220s, maybe 230s. But Corvette did this in a Corvette, or I mean Chevy did this in a Corvette. When the, the, the president of GM, Roos, got behind the wheel of the 01, it basically over-delivered and hit 233 miles per hour. Now, if you let that sink in for a second, that's faster than most Ferraris, McLarens, and Lamborghinis. Cars that are going to probably cost, well, I mean, heck, some of these cars cost anywhere between 200 and a million dollars, right? And it did this in a Corvette. And what makes this more impressive is that it is not just a one-off fluke. Multiple Zero-One test cars with a team of engineers on board consistently hit over 230 miles per hour during testing. This is a speed on repeat, providing this car isn't just fast, but it is reliably fast. It can do this multiple times with multiple different drivers in there. And they did this with two people in the car. 233 miles per hour with two people in the car. So imagine how fast this car would have went with just one person in the car, right? But what really sealed the deal for the Corvette is that the performance came from a bone stock zero one. No aftermarket tweaks, no sneaky mods, just the factory setup. No uh, gimmicks that, you know, Dodge does and Tesla does. I'm gonna say Tesla does this too, where they try to subtract rollout from the zero to 60. So no crazy, tricks or anything like that just pure 233 miles per hour of speed which occurred with this particular vehicle so what exactly makes the zero one such a beast well well let's just start under the hood or let's start in the rear where the engine is the corvette is packed with a 5.5 liter turbocharged lt7 flat pane crank v8 which is basically the exact same engine that you find in the z06 that i got parked outside we're talking about a thousand and sixty four horsepower at 7,000 RPM and 828 foot pounds of torque at 6,000 RPM, which is the most powerful V8 engine ever produced in America for a 
Well, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a mass produced vehicle because I seen some uh, reports that GM says they are not going to reduce the, uh, the availability of the zero one, which we'll see how much it costs to see how much going to, uh, you know, prevent people from actually getting into it. Now, this isn't engine isn't just about raw power either. The Chevy engineer designed the zero one with a top speed mode, which apparently adjusts the car chassis and control systems to specifically maximize the speed in this vehicle now you combine combine that with a mission pilot sport tires um and a carbon fiber aero package generating i think they say about 1200 pounds of downforce and they precisely tuned aluminum chassis and you got a car that's not just a straight line monster but it's also stable at these ridiculous speeds but what's crazy is that according to the lead engineer chris barber GM didn't think that the 233 miles per hour was even possible. They had initially aimed for 220 miles per hour and only later adjusted their expectations for 230 miles per hour after seeing the engine's potential in early tests. But once they hit the track in Germany, Zero One kept exceeding those limits, proving that Chevy had created something truly special. Now let's talk about the competition for a second. The Zero One isn't just fast for a Corvette, it is fast period at 233 miles per hour the zero one blows past some of the most famous names in the exotic car world like i said we're talking faster than a ferrari especially like that with the sf90 stradale the mclaren 720s that i personally like myself and the lamborghini uh, i think what a vendador now these cars are traditionally hold the crown when it comes to top speed and performance and Chevy just left all of them in the dust basically Sure, some of these ultra exclusive hypercars like the SSC Tatara or the Hennessy Venom F5 can go faster, but those cars are between one and three million dollars, right? So it's a lot harder to get into those cars than a, than a, than a ZR1. The ZR1, while not officially priced yet, is expected to cost anywhere between 150 and somewhere around $200,000. Even with dealership markups, we're still looking at a price tag that's at a fraction of the cost of some of these hypercars. Maybe you will see some people buying a 250K Zero One, but it's still way cheaper than a million dollars to buy like a Bugatti or Tatar or whatever other car that you could think of, right? And that just makes the Zero One an incredible value for anyone looking for a hypercar performance without having to spend millions of dollars. While the Zero One speed is mind blowing, it is not going to come cheap. As I mentioned just earlier, Chevy has not confirmed the price yet, but we know it's not going to be anywhere near the Z06 price tag, which already starts around $100,000. You're probably going to look at getting a Zero One and starting closer to $200,000, maybe even higher, depending on what these dealership markups will do. And we all know from experience, especially with the Demon 170, that these dealers can get real crazy with the pricing. The question is, even at $200,000, is a Zero One even worth it? Well, let's consider that you're getting like 1,064 horsepower, 233 miles per hour top speed. You're getting a V8 turbos and you're getting a pretty insane looking car. And the kind of engineering that lets you casually break the speed limits that are reserved some of the most richest people in the world. Now you can compare that to other cars in the price range like the Ferrari SF90, which costs close to $5,000 and that taps out at 211 miles per hour or let's just say the Ford Mustang GTD was supposed to run around $320,000, somewhere around there. That tops out at 202 miles per hour. So if you're looking for the best bang for your buck in the world of hypercars or cars that is right there touching on hypercar territory and knocking on the door, the Zero One might just be the best deal on the planet. Like I said, the SFF, the SF90 Stradale, this hybrid car, this is like, this is a hybrid. It's very impressive, but like I said earlier, its top speed is only 211 miles per hour. That's 22 miles per hour slower than a zero one. That's kind of crazy. McLaren 720S I talked about earlier is no slouch and has a top speed of 212 miles per hour, but the zero one leaves it in the dust with a massive 21 mile per hour advantage. Now, if you think about the Lamborghini Aventador, let's just say the S version, uh, Lamborghini's flagship V12 until the Revolto came out, has a top speed of 217 miles per hour, which is great, but that's still about 16 miles per hour slower than the Zero One. 
And then if you go look at the Ford Mustang GTD for its high performance track oriented Mustang, as I said, it has a claimed top speed of 202 miles per hour. Zero one doesn't just beast it, it annihilates it with an extra 31 miles per hour top speed. Now, if you go to, let's say Porsche, a little bit more cheaper, probably in the same price range that you're gonna find the Z06 and Z01 in, one of the best, and like I said, the Porsche 911 is one of the best well-rounded supercars on the planet. I think that car tops off at 205 miles per hour, but that's still over, what, 28 miles per hour slower than a zero one. The zero one is just an insane car and Chevy did it. Uh, let's go with, let's say what the Bugatti Chiron. It's top speed at 261 miles per hour and the C8 Corvette is a fraction of the price and you basically get almost the speed of, of a Bugatti from Chevy. <laughs> like it's just crazy to think about that. It's very impressive, but you know, I just can't help but think why Dodge cannot build a Viper competitor? Right now, with what the, the Stingray being out for almost what five years, 2019, almost five years, and you're telling me Solanus cannot build a single C8 Corvette competitor to even bring a single Viper out. Like the that just insane to me. Like, I'm pretty sure that there was a automatic Viper, like it came out with a Viper that has an automatic option that they would actually tried to knock on the door and try to compete with Chevy but Stellantis just does not want that to happen it's pretty clear that GM is pretty committed to keeping the Corvette at the forefront of American performance cars like there's no there's really no other competitors the Mustang can't compete uh, what the uh, the 4 GTs is gone the GTD is going to be more expensive than a zero one uh Solanus doesn't have the balls to make a new viper or any other kind of hypercar even though literally every single vehicle that Solanus sells is over a hundred thousand dollars right grand wagoneer is over a hundred thousand dollars trx is over a hundred thousand dollars durango hellcats over a hundred thousand dollars d170 is over a hundred thousand dollars right i mean you got literally so many over a hundred thousand dollar vehicles from Stellantis, they can't make a two hundred thousand dollar car that can even compete with the zero one not even like it's not even a maserati right not even a maserati even competes with the zero one and that's supposed to be their their luxury brand that has a rear engine car right but the zero one is just on another level and it just sets the tone for what the american companies can do but they are afraid to do but it also sets the stage for the next level of competition in the hypercar world if the rumors are true, Corvette is already working on an even more powerful model, the Zora, which could push the performance even further. The Zero One, in this sense, is just the beginning. It's just the stepping stone for even crazier performance. GM has a history of pushing the levels with the Corvette, and the Zero One is no different. This car shows that American manufacturers can compete with the best of the Europeans has to offer, and in some cases, blow them out of the water and for cheaper. And while the price may seem steep at first glance, when you compare it to what's available from Ferrari, Lamborghini, McLaren, uh, Bugatti, whoever, it starts to look like a bargain for performance that you're getting. And so the takeaway for me here is that a 2025 Corvette Z1 is not just a Corvette. It is a statement. It is a statement that the American engineering is alive and well, and that it can compete with the biggest names in the hypercar world. This car is faster than anything you'll find under a million dollars, and it's going to change the way people think about American performance cars. GM didn't just create the fastest Corvette, they created one of the fastest cars in the world, and it did it with a price tag that may seem high for a Corvette, which it is, but it is a steal compared to what you're getting for it. If you're a speed junkie with deep enough pockets, the Zero One is a game changer. But let me know what you guys think. Would the Zero One's insane speed make it a hit? Or would the price tag be too steep for even the most people to consider? Now, I, for one, I have a dealership that said they're going to give me allocation for one. But we'll see if that happens because we all know that dealerships love to play games in the end. But let me know in the comment section below what you guys think about the Zero One. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. 
that way you can come and see all the latest videos i'm going to make because i got to catch back up and get some extra money floating around here if you want to actually try to get to zero one but until the next time i'm out